the exception any the force that we have for business is so bad. You know, we, uh, we are predominantly a coal fired um, uh, uh, LCD uh, network. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, from a weeding perspective there, we can see that residential um, is a much larger component there. We have a very um, big portion of um, high density residential, which is probably more like Singapore, compared to many other councils in, 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 uh, in Sydney. And I should say, I work for City of Sydney. We're not the whole of Metro City. We are the central business district, plus about 40 surrounding suburbs. Um, uh, we are about 8% of Australia's GDP, so we might be geographically quite small, but actually economically very strong. Uh, we have only about 180,000 residents within that area, but we have about a million visitors a day coming into the city, and most of the commercial um, development in the whole of central city is in the city of Central Sydney. Uh, and then you can see here waste the landfill. Commercial and industrial makes up a large portion. Residential is only at about 20% and construction and demolition as well. So that just gives you a flavour. So commercial has a really big role in the, in the footprint and therefore um, is a very big target for us in terms of our program. So these are um, some of the programs. I'm going to go through this in detail, but um, better building partnership, and I'll talk about that. We focus on commercial buildings. Which, which focuses on the tenants within those buildings. Um, uh, the uh, Smart Green Business, which is a small community business program, and we're converting that into a version two, and I'll show you about that in a second, and also the uh, the uh, as well. We also try and take advantage of the state and federal government programs. So if there's a grant available, if there's a, um, some sort of program that's already been run with federal and or state government. You know, we really don't try and, you know, you've got to try and stop the reinvesting. We just try and make sure that the residents or the businesses in the city can get the most out of those programs possible. Not that this is a of This is a um, slide on the better building partnership. So when we had a look at the ownership structure of the commercial buildings in the city, we actually found that 14 property owners owned about 50% of the commercial office space in the city. So you had a very um, small number of players who owned a very large portion of the city. Um, many of these building owners are actually already experts in this field. So six out of the top ten on the South Jones and San Jordi Index are Australian property companies that are all based in Sydney. So it's not really about teaching them how to be you know, environmentally uh, more conscious. They already know a lot of this and they've made a really strong business case out of it. What this is about is trying to bring together the group and say, how do we leverage that expertise? How do we do things with a group that we couldn't do in the industry? And how do we promote Sydney as a green brand, as a green city, and how will that ultimately, I suppose, increase the economic viability and the robustness of our city as well? And our ability to, um, you know, um, uh, 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 deal with changes in the future. So um, the Lord Mayor um, is obviously the head of that, and then we have the CEO um, who gets together once a year, and we have a leadership panel between the different um, groups. We work on, and we have subcommittees on energy, water, waste, tenant engagement, um, and uh, and the whole suite of programs that are happening with all of that. Um, the other success side to that is, and I suppose this is just to recognise and just give you a flavour, commercial buildings in the city, um, uh, we have, um, there's a very big delineation between the, the building owner and the tenant. So the tenant pays their own outgoing most of the time in, in, in the city um, office environment, so they pay their own energy and, and the like. And so the tenant can actually influence about 50% of the greenhouse footprint of any commercial building. So tenants also, they tend to um, refurbish their tenancies um, more frequently and it's actually very easy to make quite a quite an energy efficiency tenant, uh, tenancy. So this program focuses purely on the tenants within those buildings. The other thing was, is because you know, the, you've got the building owners, they haven't always been a very strong, you know, I suppose a, 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 a productive relationship between the building owners and the tenants. And having a council or the government come in and work with the tenants and, and actually be an independent voice has actually helped the relationship with those two parties to get better outcomes in the 
So we have about sixteen or seventeen percent of the commercial office space in the whole of Sydney in this program already, and that's growing year in year. The other one here is Smart Green Business. Um, we started out actually with a grant from our uh, water utility to help small business reduce water. And since then, our dams were quite uh, low, they were about 10%, and there was a really big push for water efficiency. We've had some really great wins with this. The small business, is, um, as you imagine, is uh, quite difficult, very high transactional cost, and so very much handhold and work with them in a very strong way. And, uh, but the results are there. So we've got some good results, and I think the reason for that is that we did invest the time in going out and, and, and working with these businesses. And you know, they're very time poor, so you need to really help them keep them up to get them down uh, The other side of this is uh, a new uh, legal arrangement called the Environmental Upgrade Grant. Do you want to use the money, please? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll see you lower and see you at the microphone. Uh, environmental upgrade agreements. So uh, this is a, a legal arrangement. So one of the issues has been uh, what we call the split intensive. So the base building owner um, may be responsible for upgrading the life and upgrading the building and making the building more environmentally uh, uh, perform better. But the person who benefits from all those tenants and the tenants not paying for it. So that's what we call the city incentive. So this is about trying to get around the city incentive and also get a cheap cost of finance. So what happens is instead of the building owner and the financier just having a, a relationship where the building owner goes and gets finance and upgrades their building, in this case, uh, they still do that, but we have a tripartisan agreement where councils also come into that relationship and instead of the building owner paying their money directly back to the finance provider, we take a charge off that building owner. So we charge that building owner and then we pass that money back to the finance institution. And so what this does is essentially makes it a super secure loan because as a government we have the first right of drawing funds from that building owner. So if they did the hardship or trouble, you know, we can always draw funds off earlier. So we, we essentially take a uh, you know, first um, position in, in terms of the financing of that building. And what this does is it, it really lowers the risk for the finance provider because they know they're always going to get their money back. And therefore they can provide a much cheaper way of finance. So we've done our first, um, this has only been in for a little while, we've done our first environmental upgrade agreement with a company called Fraser Property Group, a um, $26 million project, and they were saying they got finance at about half the rate they would have otherwise. So it's a very uh, very big influence, and that allows existing buildings to be upgraded. And the point here is, is that most of the buildings that are here now are going to be here still in 2030. So if we don't have any impact on that on that 70% reduction goal, we need to be looking at existing buildings absolutely. So the other part of this legislation is that the building owners not only get cheaper finance, but they are also allowed to pass some of that charge, because of the charge, onto the tenants as well. Because the tenants have to pay government charges um, for their legal, uh, for their leases. So there's, there's a litmus test here, and that is that the outgoings of the tenants um, can't be any more than what they would have been before. So if you do a, say, a lighting upgrade in a tenancy, and they were paying, you know, $100 a, a, you know, a, an hour or whatever for, for electricity, $100 a day, um, you've reduced their billing out to fifty dollars a day, say, because you put more energy efficient lights in. You can uh, you cannot charge them more than forty dollars for that charge. So you have got to make sure that they're not paying any more than they were before. And so that allows and that gives those the incentive because the building owner can pass on some of the costs associated with that building. So there's a whole bunch of arrows in here, but essentially that's that's how that system works. And if you want to know more about that, just just do a Google search and you want to know and uh, we're going to find it. We have, the legislation does need also this to be happening in residential buildings, but we haven't quite got there yet with a few other issues associated with that. Uh, traditional council, you know, core business, we also do a lot of environmental programs with residents, and so here's just a, a quick snapshot of all those sort of actions that we're doing with residents planning seminars, uh, we have a green transit program, we focus on green apartments as well, which is I suppose, particularly interesting for um, um, for Singapore. We also have um, power meters that we bring to that or the people can borrow from the library to see what's using the energy within our households and those kind of things. And this is just a, a greenhouse that we had 
Great apartments, um, this is a program, you know, we've been running with about 30 buildings, that we have about 700 or 800 high density residential buildings, so we've got only a, a first step, but the results have been extremely positive. Um, what 